Well, welcome everyone. My name is Will Urschel. I'm one of the pastors here. And uh, who's had their Thanksgiving already? Raise your hands. There you go. Is anybody left still to have their Thanksgiving? Yes, Tabitha. Are you doing it today? My family's doing it today too. So Tabitha and I are leaving right now with my wife because <laughs> we have to go get the food started, right? <laughs> Kim's actually here. I'm Tabitha, I'm amazed you, you two gals are here. We're actually doing this today. and You came to the service. That's good. Thank you. That's commitment. I like that. All right. How many of you guys watched the game last night or yesterday? Oh. <laughs> Only the Michigan fans are raising their hands. Where's Steve? <laughs> you don't have your shirts on today. Okay. Thank you. That's right. Well, uh, so I was going to ask uh, you what you have to say Thanksgiving for, but we're not going to ask Steve what he's thankful for, are we? No. They don't get to ask that question today. But, uh, well, one interesting thing is, uh, I know a lot of you turned it off like in the, when there was only 35 seconds left, but if you did, you missed something. And uh, actually, it was the most important part of the game. This, when the whole 105,000 fans of Michigan got out of the stadium and they ran down onto the field. It was, it was incredible. It's like this big ant's nest and everybody piled in down there, right? Yep. So uh, I, I had to, I had to, Steve, I had to stay and actually suffer through watching that happen, but it was, it was kind of interesting. So, but part of the reason is people up to that point had just been, what, watching the game, right? And they were so excited about what was going on, they said, I've got to be a part of this, right? So they wanted to get down on the field where the game was played and be part of that. So I know all of you are excited today because we have a chance to praise God, right? Yeah, but not only everybody can get up here on the pulpit, right? No, we're not going to do that. But you are going to all get out of the stands, and you're going to get into the game this morning. Are you excited about that? Yes! I am, because that means I, get, I don't have to talk as much. That's wonderful. That's great. Okay, so what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to take some time uh, to just reflect on God's mercies with us, okay, and his grace and things we actually have to be thankful for. Pull me up that first slide there, guys. I just want to read the scripture verse. It says, this is from Psalm 105. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds amongst the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. So we're called to do what kind of things here? We're supposed to be making known his deeds, Right? And we're supposed to be doing what else? Singing his praises, right? Now, the interesting thing is in this psalm, it doesn't tell us what those deeds are. It doesn't tell us what those things are we're supposed to be singing his praise. It just says, go do it, right? And sometimes when we start our prayers off, we start off with asking, right? Because we know what our needs are, right? But a lot of times we forget about what God's wondrous deeds are that he's done with us to start off with. So, uh, so today we're all going to get out of the stands, we're going to get on the playing field, and you're all going to get a chance to get a, do a part of that. So the first thing I need you to do is, I need you to, isn't it, didn't, aren't the chairs beautiful? They're all laid out in these really nice wells. Do you know who do this, does this every, every Sunday morning? Matt gets here with Paul Giroux, and they, they carefully, they have their little rulers out, and they space them, get the, that's what your dad does, didn't you know that? That's right, he gives the rule out, so we're going to mess it all up. So what I want you to do is, <laughs> look around while it's looking nice, because it's going to stop looking nice. I want you to get in a group of no less than four, and no more than ten, okay? So you can take your chairs and turn them around and do whatever you need to do, but go do that. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you 30 seconds, go, before we get started with the next thing. So find a group to be part of. Remember what I said, no less than four, no more than ten. If you got more than ten people, vote them off the island, kick them out, make them start their own group. Da, 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 da. 
Da, da. Okay, now that you're there, grab a seat, sit on down that way. When you're sitting down, I know you're there. Okay, so you just came out of the stands and you're on the playing field. And you know what? People get, once they're down the field, it's like, what do we do? And normally, you know what people do because they don't know what else to do? They go, they tear down the goalposts because what else do we do, right? So we tear the goalposts. So no, we're not going to do that here. We're not going to destroy the church. Uh, but instead of that, everybody has one of these other little white sheets of paper. Why don't you pick that up? It's past, they're, sitting, they're sitting on chairs. You can't find one. Grab one off of there. It's got two sides. On one side, it's, it starts with a, a, something that says the free gift of salvation. Okay? So flip over to that side. So what I'm going to ask you to do is go ahead and give me that next slide up there. I want you in your groups to just go around and, and read those verses, okay? Because these are, these are not all of, but these are a number of those mighty deeds that God has done that we get a chance to say thank you for, right? And so uh, what I would encourage you to do is just get somebody to start in your group. And when you do that, please say what your name is, because you may be in a group of people you don't know. Uh, say, hey, my name is Will, and I'll, I'll read this first verse for you. And then how about somebody in that group want you to stop and then just say, hey, I'll, I'll thank God for this. Why don't you thank him for that? doesn't have to be the person that's read it. It could be, or maybe somebody else in your group, okay? And then when you get done with that prayer, just go on to the next. Now, I know you're going to be ready to start praying about other things, things that are going on in your life and all those other things. No, no, I want you to stay focused on these, okay? And so we're going to take about uh, 10 minutes here. So just take some time and share these scriptures and, uh, and pray through those things. That makes sense? Okay, ready, start, go.
Father, thank you that you are the solid rock beneath our feet. You say that you are the banner that goes before us. You are a safe tower that surrounds us. You are a still harbor for us to be in. Uh, You say that you are the the commander of the host of the Lord's armies that goes uh, ahead of us as well. And we thank you for all the provisions and all the amazing things that, that, of who you are, Father. We just praise things in Jesus' name. Amen. David and the crew is going to lead us in another worship song here. You know, we're coming up on a time of year where uh, a lot of anticipation, right? For the holidays, being with family and uh, gifts and time off and all those kind of things. But for a lot of folks, this has been a really hard year this year. Um, some of you are going to be maybe have already had that first Thanksgiving where there's a seat empty from somebody that was there the year before. I know for Kim and I, this will be our first Thanksgiving. (laughs) Without my mom, without her dad, right? Those are hard things. Maybe there's somebody who's really sick in your family. I know we got somebody here with a child who's got leukemia, Some of you may have spouses that are really struggling, other family members. Um, Maybe you just lost your job or you don't have employment and you're just thinking, how are we going to get through this holiday, let alone where are we going to be living at as well too. A lot of things going on. So um, give me that next slide, you guys. Uh, So... I, I love God. He has such a great sense of humor, <laughs> doesn't he? Now listen to this. He says, Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, <clears throat> for great is your reward in heaven. And for so, for so they persecuted the prophets which were before you. And maybe you haven't been persecuted for your faith, but you're under stress, Right? a lot of different ways. And and amazing thing is God in these situations he's, he calls us blessed for going through these hard times. And I know a lot of times when you're in the middle of these hard times thinking I I'm, I'm not getting that. I don't feel blessed. I mean, I feel under a lot of pressure. I feel a lot of anxiety and stress and those kinds. I don't know that I necessarily feel blessed. But God says we are, right? We just been through this whole series those I know some of you maybe your first time here to Manual, but we just been through a series looking at uh, David and Saul and uh, their lives, and we just finished up looking at David's getting chased all over the country by Saul just for doing what seems to be the right thing, right? And uh, one thing we haven't covered in this series is, you know, David wrote a whole bunch of psalms in the book of Psalms about what was going on in his life during that time as well, and he listed all the, man, I, I'm, I got people trying to take my life, and they're trying to kill me, and they're chasing me everywhere, and I'm losing everything, but in every one of those psalms, there's, there's something that happens just like in the Psalm 59 here towards the tail end of that. He says, you are my strength, and I sing praise to you, God. You are my fortress, my God, in whom I can rely, right? And I'm always amazed that David, just his honesty about all the terrible things that are going on in his life, but he also seems to always get that focus back on praising God in the midst of all that stuff, right? So what we're going to do now is, in your groups, if you flip your paper over, there is a story of somebody else who had to go through a hard time. And there's the story of Paul and Silas. Now, we could probably do a three or four week series on this passage. We're not going to do that. I'm going to give you a chance just to read it as a group. So what I'm going to ask you to do is, it's in three paragraphs, so maybe start with one person, have them read one of the paragraphs, and have somebody else read the next paragraph, and have somebody else read the next paragraph. But and then just kind of reflect on your group is, well, what was going on with Paul and Silas that maybe they were under some stress, right? And then kind of talk a little bit about what was their reaction to that, and then think about a little bit about what's the end of the story, Right? Because sometimes when you're in the middle of a bunch of stress, you can't see anything but the situation that you're in. And uh, so it'd be good to go through that. You know, I work with pilots in the Air Force for 30 years, and they have this thing called tunnel vision. 
You know what that is? That's when they get up and they fly our high-speed jets and they get around 9, 9.2 times the force of gravity. And you know what that does to their bodies? It, it drains all the blood <laughs> out of your head down towards their, your feet. And when that happens, uh, along with some other problems, is your, your vision all of a sudden starts collapsing in. And you literally look like you're looking through a tunnel. And as a matter of fact, our pilots would try and fly to the point where they would almost go unconscious, right? But when that happens, you can't see anything but this little tunnel of things. And a lot of times, you know what happens to our pilots at that point is they fly into the ground because they can't see anything else. And they, they've lost sight of the bigger picture, and they crash the plane. And, uh, and that's what we call control flight and terrain in the, in the nomenclature there. But some, when you get done reading this, there's, there's bound to be somebody in your group that's under some stress now, or has been under some stress this last year. So after you have a chance just to share a little about your observations there, if you're, if you're under some stress right now, maybe from a health situation or just a relationship thing or other things, I just encourage you to share that with your group. Just say, hey, I'm, I'm feeling that stress right now. And once you take some, get somebody else in your group, pray for them, okay? And just say, God... Be with them in the midst of this so they don't lose sight of you, right? Um, and that's easy to do. I remember when our little boy had cancer in the midst of that treatment. It was a while ago, but I remember coming to church and I couldn't do anything but just be here. Because that was about all the energy that I had. And you may have somebody like that in your group, and they need you to pray for him this morning, okay? So uh, go ahead, read through that, make some quick observations, and then just take some time and share in your group if you're under some stress, and, and would somebody in your group just pray for each other at this time? Let's go ahead and do that.
Father, thank you uh, that you are strong and enduring and uh, the good shepherd that walks with us in these really hard times and that you do not depart from us, Father. And Father, I just thank you for everybody sharing the things that they were sharing this morning and just help them, help all of us, God, to walk alongside of our brothers and sisters as they're carrying some pretty heavy loads. And I just pray you'd help all of us just have a, a great sense of the height and the width and the depth and the length of your love for us in Christ. And that you said that there's nothing that can ever separate us from that love. You say there's no powers, no principalities, nothing in the past or the future, no fears or doubts that can ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Give me that next uh, slide up there. Well, something else we're going to do with Thanksgiving is... We can encourage each other. We're doing a little bit of that in these groups already. But here from Hebrews, it says, but encourage one another daily as long as it's called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness, right? Because we all lose our sight and then we get off course. And we need to hear, we need to hear about the good things that God has been doing and the things that God has helped us overcome. And he also says in 1 Thessalonians, he says, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. So one of the things we need is uh, we need an opportunity to hear from each other about just some praises as you've looked over this last year and say, God, thank you for, and we just need to fill in that blank. And it's going to be good for, for, for you to share that with the rest of us, and it's going to be good for the rest of us to hear that as well, too. So Greg's got a mic, and he's going to be over in that part of the auditorium, and I'm going to be over here walking. And if there's something you would just like to share with everybody else about uh, the goodness of God for you and your family or folks around you or in our church this last year, or maybe at school, wherever else, um, just lift your hand up, and we'll bring the mic over to you. Got one there in the back, Greg. I thank God that um, through the illness and death of my mother and the dissension in the family that I've had my family here and my friends, that he provided me a new family to take care of my pain through all of that mm -hmm. and to help me heal. Mm -hmm. And I really thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah. I got one back here. Uh, I was just going to say I'm encouraged by the number of baptisms that we've had this year. Um, and not just the number of them, but the ability that those who were baptized had to articulate the gospel and include scripture that they knew uh, and had memorized and were, you could tell, had been faithfully reading the Bible. And I think that's a testament to this body. And, and so I'm thankful for that. Um, I'm wait, thank wait no. what, what, what are you wearing? I am proudly wearing a Michigan outfit. Okay. <laughs> Even thou will let her share with you. Keep going. Go ahead. Um, my family and I have been praying very, very hard for my brother to find Christ again. And... Recently, he has, he has found Christ in a church, yeah. which is a huge praise for our family. So, yeah. very thankful for that. Amen. Amen. Yes. I'm going to go to Kim and then Tracy. I'm just thankful for the church helping me through the death of my son, and helping me um, just encourage me to grow closer to God. And, and I found my church. And I'm just very thankful for that. I'd just like to, uh, my name is Don Antonio. And I'd just like to tell you that Jesus loves you. And he's gracious. He's forgiving. And he's awesome. And I love him too. Um, I'm just thankful because we did the Thanksgiving baskets and it all went off really good. Like we got to serve 21 peak families and I mean, it just went really smooth. 
And so it just feels like every year things get better. My life, things get better every year. My family, I get more of my family. I'm just blessed. That's all. Just thankful. Amen. Thanks. Thanks, Tracy. My name's Barbara, and I fell a couple of months ago, and I just want to thank all the people who brought me this far. Um, I've got a broken collarbone, it's just about healed, but there were dozens of church people and friends and was able to come out here and visit Jill and Jake. I'm very thankful. Thank you. Here, Will. Here, Will. As someone who is not from this area, from Minnesota, it's encouraging to be here as a student at a church that is faithfully following Christ and who is teaching the next generation. So thank you. I just thank the Lord that um, Marsha became a member of our church this past spring and the work that the Lord has done in her life to give her the joy of the Lord daily and um, I know when I go to see her, her face just lights up. And as I've shared with her, and she also acknowledges it is only the power of God that is helping her do that. And uh, she is faithfully pray praying for all of us, everyone in the church. She prays through the prayer list. And, and uh, God has just given her the joy of the Lord and being able to be a light and a testimony where she is. And I just praise the Lord for his work and how he has... Um, used our church and its ministry um, through the years because I found an email from her from 2004 and uh, the church then was we were reaching out to her and her boys came to Awana and things like that so I just praise the Lord for his good work in her life and thank you for your prayers for her over the past couple of months I have missed more church services that I've been here, and it's great to have the online option and worship team. I love hearing this ensemble on Sunday morning because you don't hear the congregation at all. You just hear this ensemble group. As much as I've loved <laughs> that, that ensemble, I have missed the congregational singing and the, just being here. And it's so good to be back and so good to be here. I ran this morning for the first time in three weeks, and, you know, I'm breathing heavily still, but God is so good, and I really appreciate this congregation and each and every one of you. we got time for a couple more. Oh, Greg right here. I, um, I got to officially join my new family this year in April uh, when I got married to Chris, and I am so thankful for that family, having so many godly men and women to look up to and to talk to, and um, I think that knowing this family has really strengthened my faith in the Lord because I know I was meant to end up here. Um, my name is Josh, and... Um so this year has been pretty different for me. It's probably been the best year in years. First, it's the most I've been sober probably in five, six, seven years. Um, it all started January 15th this year. And um, so I got a mother that's got stage four cervical cancer. But she seems to be doing really good now. Um, I've got about 10 months clean, I think. Um, I've been, um, been at, started at Jeremiah House, went from there to the homeless shelter, went from there to cap housing. Um, my girlfriend for the past five years is now going to, is getting ready to go to her story, which is a women's recovery thing. Um, it's just everything that's happening in the short 10 months that um, I'm used to just running away from, um, not really giving anything a chance. 
but everything that I've accomplished in the past 10 months is, um, I thought it was going to take at least a couple years, you know. I mean, from getting off probation to dealing with the courts to getting finally staying sober and figuring out this whole religious thing, if it's for me or not. But I know it's for me because I'm seeing things like that I directly asked for. Um, I'm giving my heart and soul into it. And I just believe that um, coming from a place when you've tried your hardest and most sincere and you don't see no answers, you don't see no change, it's just hard to stick through with it. But I just wanted to share that in case there's anybody in here that's been trying to, to not give up hope but ain't seeing no no answers that, you know, sometimes it is not our time, you know. It's God's time. And usually when I step out my own way, it works out better. So, thanks. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> One more? Yeah. Some of you may remember Brent Howland. He was an elder here many years ago, and his son Caleb was a lifelong childhood friend of mine, uh, and he'd been walking away from God for the better part of a decade, but uh, this, this summer and fall, he, he came to Christ, which was just such an answer to prayer. Um, so thankful for that, and, yeah. and God opened the door for me to be able to go visit him in Iowa for the first time. I hadn't seen him in, in also close to a decade and that was just such an encouragement to see his church family there, just so happy to see him there every week. They've been praying for him for, for a long time. And uh, it's just so encouraging to see that we're not in this alone here at Emmanuel, you know, coming here every week. It's, it's easy to forget that there's, there's Christians across the country praying for the same people we're praying for. Um, so I, I was just so thankful to God for that. Amen. Amen. David, you guys want to lead us in some worship here to God?